Background Information of Midterm Measures The IMO has revised its 2018 GHG initial strategy by adopting the 2023 IMO GHG reduction strategy and set a goal to achieve the net zero GHG emissions from international shipping by 2050. As a pathway to achieve this goal, it has set indicative checkpoints of 20% to 30% by 2030 and 70% to 80% by 2040 compared to 2008 levels. IMO also has set targets to introduce zero or near zero emission fuels, etc. at a rate of 5% to 10% in international shipping and reduce CO2 emissions per transport work by 40%, respectively, by 2030. The 2023 IMO GHG reduction strategy includes life cycle emissions, emissions from fuel production, transportation, and storage, in the scope of GHG emissions, in addition to emissions from onboard ships. To achieve these goals, the IMO has been working on establishment of a regulatory framework that includes both technical and economic elements, known as midterm measures, with the aim of introducing them in 2027. At MEPC 83, draft amendments to MARPLE Annex 6, which includes the framework for the midterm measures, were approved. The draft amendments will be considered for adoption at the extraordinary MEPC session in October 2025. The midterm measures consist of the following two provisions. 1. GHG Fuel Intensity Regulations, GFI Regulations Base Target and Direct Compliance Target for the GFI Regulations Under GFI Regulations, the GHG intensity of a ship is defined as the annual average of the life cycle GHG emissions per energy of the fuel used by the ship, expressed in grams of CO2 equivalent per megajoule. The GHGs include carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, CH4, and nitrous oxide, N2O. The amount of energy used is calculated from the fuel consumption and the lower calorific value of the fuel used. If more than one type of fuels is used, the GHG intensity of the ship is calculated as the weighted average of the GHG intensity of those fuels by energy used. The GFI regulations set two levels of targets, base target and direct compliance target with different reduction levels from the average GHG intensity of fuel used in international shipping in 2008, which was 93.3 grams of CO2 equivalent per megajoule. Application. Ships of 5,000 GT and above engaged in international voyages, excluding ships not propelled by mechanical means and platforms including FPSOs and FSUs and drilling rigs, regardless of their propulsion, and semi-submersible vessels. Implementation date, January 1, 2028, expected to enter into force in March 2027 at the earliest. A. Base target. Based on the 2008 reference GHG intensity value, 93.3 grams of CO2 equivalent per megajoule, base target annual values are set to achieve 4% reduction in 2028, 8% reduction in 2030, and 30% reduction in 2035. In addition, 65% reduction from the 2008 reference value in 2040 is also stipulated. B. Direct Compliance Target Based on the 2008 reference GHG intensity value, 93.3 grams of CO2 equivalent per megajoule, Direct Compliance Target annual values are set to achieve 17% reduction in 2028, 21% reduction in 2030, and 43% reduction in 2035. The compliance approaches for the GFI regulations vary depending on where the GHG intensity value of the ship falls in relation to the base target and direct compliance target. The details are as follows. Case 1. Direct Compliance Target Achieved when a ship achieved direct compliance target by using fuels with low GHG intensity, such as green fuels, the ship receives surplus units from the IMO GHG registry, which represent the amount by which the GHG emissions are below to the direct compliance target. This surplus unit can be used once for one of the following purposes. Banked for use in the following reporting periods, the validity for banked surplus units is two years. Transfer to another ship that has not achieved the base target to balance that ship's Tier 2 compliance deficit, or voluntarily cancelled as a mitigation contribution. Case 2. Base target achieved, but direct compliance target not achieved. 
Payment of contribution equivalent to the GHG emissions exceeding the direct compliance target, referred to as Tier 1, is required. The unit price of contribution is set at $100 US dollars per ton of GHG emissions, $100 US dollars per ton CO2 equivalent, exceeding the direct compliance target. The transfer of surplus units from other ships or the use of the ship's surplus units banked in the previous year is not permitted. Case 3 base target not achieved. Payment of contribution equivalent to the GHG emissions exceeding the direct compliance target, Tier 1, is required. The unit price of contribution is set at $100 US dollars per ton of GHG emissions, $100 US dollars per ton CO2 equivalent, 5 exceeding the direct compliance target. The transfer of surplus units from other ships or the use of the ship's surplus units banked in the previous year is not permitted. In addition to the payment of contribution above, one or more of the following approaches is required for GHG emissions exceeding the base target, referred to as Tier 2. Payment of contribution equivalent to the GHG emissions exceeding the base target. The unit price for contribution is set at $380 US dollars per ton of GHG emissions, $380 US dollars per ton CO2 equivalent, 5 exceeding the base target. Surplus units transferred from other ships and or surplus units banked from previous years. When calculating the amount of surplus units or contribution, a unit called compliance balance is used. The compliance balance for each ship is calculated by multiplying the deviation of the ship's GHG intensity from the direct compliance target for that year by the annual energy consumption. 4. Promotion of decarbonization through the IMO Net Zero Fund. An IMO Net Zero Fund will be established based on contributions paid by ships that cannot meet the GFI intensity targets. This fund will provide rewards for ships using zero or near zero emission fuels, etc., and support projects that contribute to fuel conversion for ships in developing countries. Disbursement for ships using zero or near zero GHG emission technologies, fuels and or energy sources, ZNZs, starting in 2028, the aim is to promote early transition to zero emissions by providing rewards for the use of ZNZs. The GHG intensity threshold for ZNZs is set at 19 grams of CO2 equivalent per megajoule from 2028 to 2034 and 14 grams of CO2 equivalent per megajoule from 2035. Note that the calculation method and unit price for these rewards will be determined by March 2027. Timeline for GFI Regulation to pen a ship account in the IMO GFI registry by October 1, 2027. Each ship should update its Ship Energy Efficiency Management Plan, SEMP. Each ship is required to collect and record the necessary information in accordance with the updated SEMP. Each ship is required to pay the annual administration fee to the IMO GFI registry by June 30. Each ship is required to calculate the GHG intensity, base target, and direct compliance target. The IMO GFI registry issues a ship account statement to each ship by August 31, 2029. By September 2029, Statement of Compliance, SOC, is issued by the Flag Administration. The issuance of SOC is reported to the ship account by the Flag Administration by October 31, 2029. Thank you for watching the video. For more marine topics, please subscribe the channel. Please help us with your valuable feedback to improve the contents.